When dealing with random variables, there are a few quantities that we're often concerned with knowing or computing. One of those things that we want to know usually is what's what we call the mean of the random variable. This is also called the expected value of the random variable. When we talked about Gaussian random variables a minute ago, we said that the mean of the Gaussian random variable was the quantity m. Sometimes we use the quantity mu to denote that mean. So we already talked about Gaussian random variables having this quantity called the mean and how that mean for Gaussian random variable told us where that kind of Gaussian bell-shaped curve was centered on the real line. Well, other random variables that we deal with also have a mean. The, uh, it might not be as easy to figure out where that mean is by looking at the PDF, since some random variables have PDF functions that aren't symmetric. But nonetheless, we can still compute the mean of these random variables. And that tells us where, on average, if we do experiment after experiment after experiment, where, on average, the random variable kind of lives in terms of where it shows up on average on the real line. So the definition of the mean of a random variable is given here. There's uh, some different notation we use. Sometimes we use this right here. That means the expected value of x, which is synonymous with mu. Some books like to use this x bar. Some books or textbooks like to use a mu with a subscript x. So sometimes mu is used, sometimes you like to throw the random variable x on there just to indicate this is the mean of the random variable x. So you see lots of different uh, notation used in the literature and in textbooks to indicate this. But the definition itself is actually very easy, and this is it right here. It says that we take the probability density function of our random variable x, and then we multiply it by the value x, and then we integrate over the whole real line. So essentially what we're doing here is since we're integrating over x is what we're doing is for each value x on the real line we're putting it right here and then we're multiplying by the probability density of the random variable at that value x. And then we move on to the next value x and we just do that over the whole continuum of the real line. So this is very much a weighted average of x with respect to the probability density function. So it's just a weighted average of the PDF function. So given a PDF for a random variable, you can just do some simple calculus to actually compute that, and then you would know the mean of the random variable, which actually means if a lot of experiments are performed, where on average you tend to land on the real line. We can also compute the mean of a function of a random variable. So this is interesting. In this definition here, we are dealing with a random variable y, but y was generated from a random variable x through some function g. So you can kind of think of it as performing an experiment to get an instance of a random variable x and then doing some deterministic manipulation via this function to get this value y. So if we want to know what the expected value of this quantity y is, we do just what we did before. We take the actual function value, multiply it by the density at that point x, and we, we integrate it all over the real line x. So again, it's just a weighted averaging over the real line the difference here is we're dealing with a function of a random variable instead of just the random variable itself. If the function of the random variable is just g of x equals x, then this degenerates to the case we had just before. So this is a more general definition of the expected value of a function of a random variable. And you could actually choose that function to be the, the function y equals x, and then you would be back on the previous slide. But in general, we can actually compute the mean of a function of a random variable. Besides means, we're also usually concerned with moments of random variables. So this definition defines what we mean by the rth moment. Again, lots of different books use different notation. A common one is to put some type of r to indicate that this is the rth moment. So for instance, r might be 2, r might be 3, r might be 4. In some advanced signal processing, you might use very high order moments, say 4 or 6 or 8. Typically, we're concerned with just the second moment. So usually for our computations, r is equal to 2. And we're computing what we call the, r, the second moment of the random variable. So again, this looks very familiar. We're taking our PDF, we're multiplying by some quantity, and then we're integrating over the whole real line. So again, this is just a, average, or a weighted average of the PDF via some function. The difference here is we're taking x and raising it to some power. So if we were doing the second moment of the random variable x, r would be 2, and we'll be taking x squared times the probability density function and doing the calculus to get out that number. And again, this definition here really just follows from the previous slide where we had 
the general expression for the mean value of a function of a random variable. Here, really what we're doing is we're letting that function g of x equal x to the r. So we've really just chosen a specific function to evaluate the rth moment. And then finally, for this section when dealing with moments, sometimes we want to know not what the rth moment is, but what the rth central moment is. And again, lots of different notation used in different books. One that you might see is x minus mu to the r with this bar over the top, indic indicating this is kind of a mean quantity. The rth central moment is very similar to the rth moment. The difference is we subtract out the mean before we raise it to the r and multiply it by the PDF. So this right here looks very similar to the rth moment. The only difference is we've subtracted out a constant number before raising this whole quantity to the quantity r. So really what we're doing is we're kind of centering up the random variable before computing its moment. Obviously, if you're dealing with a random variable whose mean is zero, so if mu is zero, then the rth central moment and the rth moment are the exact same thing, because they have the exact same equation here when mu is zero. One thing that we'll do often is we will compute the second central moment. It turns out that the second central moment is what we call the variance of a random variable. So this is a quantity that we'll compute often, especially when dealing with noise and noise power, because this second central mo moment is what quantifies the power of a noise random process. We'll get to that soon. And the variance is simply the expected value of x minus its mean, that entire quantity, squared. So this right here is how we define variance. It's just the second central moment. Most of the time in this class, we will be dealing with zero mean random variables. When dealing with zero mean random variables, mu is zero, so then in that case, the variance, which is the second central moment, is just equal to the mean square value. But in general, the relationship we have for variance is that the variance is equal to the expected value of x squared minus the mean squared. So remember this equation, variance is the expected value of x squared or the mean of x squared minus the mean squared. Also be careful when you say this, these are very different quantities here. Here we're taking the, average, the expected value of the quantity x squared. Mu, if you remember, is the expected value of x. So this quantity here is the expected value of x, the entire quantity squared, whereas this is the expected value of x squared. When you say it in words, those words are almost identical, but uh, don't be confused between the difference between the expected value of x squared and the expected value of x, entire quantity squared. Those are very different things. So we've been talking about probability density functions, cumulative distribution functions, Gaussian random variables, mean, variance, all kinds of interesting things. These next few examples will actually get some practice working with these quantities. We'll do an example with the PDF of a Gaussian random variable and compute probabilities related to Gaussian random variables being less than to a number or greater than or equal to a number. We'll kind of pick some kind of toy PDF examples that are easy to deal with and we'll actually compute the mean and variance for a random variable given its density function. And then we'll work a problem that is very relevant to the things we'll be doing later in this class having to deal with digital communications. We'll actually look at a problem where the received signal is a random quantity, so it has a received signal distribution. We're going to analyze what that distribution is and understand how, based on that random quantity, our receiver should make choices in terms of demodulating or receiving that data. So the next three videos work through each of these examples one by one.